Hello guys, welcome back to NBA Stars. If you are new here, please subscribe and turn on bell notification icon. As we all know that Wilt Chamberlain was one of the most famous and successful basketball players of all time. He was basketball's unstoppable force, the most awesome offensive force the game has ever seen. Dominating the game as few players in any sport ever have, Chamberlain seemed capable of scoring and rebounding at will, despite the double and triple teams and constant fouling tactics that opposing teams used to try to shut him down. No other player in NBA history has spawned so many myths nor created such an impact. It's difficult to imagine now, with the seemingly continuing surge of bigger skilled players, the effect of playing against Chamberlain, who was not only taller and stronger than almost anyone he matched up against but remarkably coordinated as well. But there is more to Chamberlain than just his on-court accomplishments, as, he was also one of the most controversial figures in the sport, due to his open discussion of his sex life and love of parties. He was a complex and contradictory man. He was also a talented musician, a noted photographer, and an actor. His life was full of ups and downs, both on and off the court. This video will explore the life of Wilt Chamberlain, from his humble beginnings in Philadelphia to his untimely death at the age of 63. We will also take a look at some of the more controversial aspects of his life, such as his sex life and his battles with fellow players. Childhood and Early Career Chamberlain was born on August 21, 1936, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, into a family of nine children, the son of Olivia Ruth Johnson, a domestic worker and homemaker, and William Chamberlain, a welder, custodian, and handyman. He was a frail child, nearly dying of pneumonia in his early years and missing a whole year of school as a result. In his early years, Chamberlain was not interested in basketball because he thought it was a game for sissies. According to Chamberlain, basketball was king in Philadelphia, so he eventually turned to the sport. Chamberlain was a very tall child, already measuring six feet at age 10. Chamberlain had a natural advantage against his peers, he soon was renowned for his scoring talent, his physical strength, and his shot-blocking abilities. As the star player for the Overbrook Panthers, Chamberlain averaged 31 points a game during the 1953 high school season. During summer vacations, he worked as a bellhop in Kutcher's Hotel. After his last Overbrook season, more than 200 universities tried to recruit the basketball prodigy. Among others, UCLA offered Chamberlain the opportunity to become a movie star. At the ages of 16 and 17, Chamberlain played several professional games under the pseudonym George Marcus. There were contemporary reports of the games in Philadelphia publications, but he tried to keep them secret from the amateur athletic union. Chamberlain's freshman team debut was highly anticipated, and he delivered. The freshman squad was pitted against the varsity, a team favored to win their conference that year. On December 3, 1956, Chamberlain made his varsity debut as a center. Reportedly, Chamberlain also broke Johnny Kerr's toe with a slam dunk. By this time, he had developed several offensive weapons that became his trademarks, such as his finger roll, his jump shot in fade away, which he could also hit as a bank shot, his passing, and his shot blocking. As he did at Overbrook, Chamberlain again showcased his diverse athletic talent. He ran the 100-yard dash in 10.9 seconds, shot putted 56 feet, triple jumped more than 50 feet, and won the high jump in the Big 8 Conference Track and Field Championships three straight years. Chamberlain was named to the first-team NCAA men's basketball All-American squad and led the Jayhawks into the NCAA Finals against the North Carolina Tar Heels. By the time Chamberlain was 21, even before he turned professional, he had already been featured in Time, Life, Look, and Newsweek professional career. After his frustrating junior year, Chamberlain wanted to become a professional player before finishing his senior year. On October 24, 1959, Chamberlain made his NBA debut, starting for the Philadelphia Warriors. Chamberlain became the NBA's highest-paid player when he signed for $30,000, in his first NBA season, Chamberlain averaged 37.6 points and 27 rebounds, convincingly breaking the previous regular season records for a rookie. Chamberlain broke eight NBA records, and he was named NBA Rookie of the Year and NBA MVP that season. For the next six seasons, Chamberlain led the league in scoring. In 1961-62, he averaged 50.4 points and scored 100 in one game. In 1962-63, he averaged 44.8 points per game. Chamberlain was simply the greatest scoring machine in the history of basketball. Despite his scoring achievements, Chamberlain and his teammates were not winning NBA championships. The late 1950s and 1960s were dominated by the Boston Celtics and their center Bill Russell. Russell had revolutionized basketball as much with his defense as Chamberlain had with his offense, and Russell always had a great group of supporting players, including Bob Cousy, Bill Sharman, John Havlicek, and Sam Jones. Chamberlain often had strong supporting players as well, but Russell always seemed to pull out the championship. Chamberlain always took a great deal of abuse from the media and fans because of his lack of success against Russell. 
Finally, in 1967, Chamberlain reversed his fortunes. The Warriors had moved to San Francisco, and Wilt had gone with them, but he was later traded to the new Philadelphia team, the 76ers. In 1967, the 76ers had a great supporting cast, including Chet Walker, Luke Johnson, Hal Greer, Wally Jones, and Billy Cunningham. They finished the regular season with the best record in the history of the league. In the championship series, the 76ers polished off the San Francisco Warriors to win the first world title for Chamberlain. Several years later, Chamberlain was traded again this time to the Los Angeles Lakers. For the last two losses, in 1969 and 1970, Chamberlain was on the team. The 1969 loss was particularly devastating, since it was to Russell and the Celtics again. In the final game, Chamberlain was injured and played very little. Russell later criticized Chamberlain for not playing, thus infuriating Chamberlain and removing the last remnants of friendship between the two men. In 1972, however, the Lakers seemed poised to finally win a championship. They finished the year with the best regular season record in history, breaking the record set by Chamberlain and the 76ers in 1967. In addition to Chamberlain, the team now featured Happy Hairston, Gail Goodrich, Jim McMillan, Jerry West, and a strong set of reserves in the playoffs. The Lakers first defeated the Milwaukee Bucks, with Chamberlain completely outplaying the Bucks center, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He scored 24 points, grabbed 29 rebounds. Following the 1973 season, Chamberlain left the Lakers to become the coach of the San Diego Conquistadors of the Old American Basketball Association. Chamberlain left the NBA as the all-time leader in points scored more than 30,000 in rebounds over 22,000, and with four most valuable player awards and more than 40 league records. Sex life Although Chamberlain was shy and insecure as a teenager, he became well known for his womanizing when he was an adult. Sex-obsessed NBA hero Wilt Chamberlain holds numerous basketball records, but nothing comes close to his claim that he slept with 20,000 women. In his 1991 book of view, From Above, the slam hunk claimed to have bedded an incredible 20,000 women in his lifetime. The now-deceased star received a barrage of criticism for his claim, but he never backed down. Chamberlain never said he was bragging or stretching the truth. Instead, he stated, I was just laying it out there for people who were curious. What's more, the basketball legend was emphatic about the fact that he never had hanky-panky with a married woman. Woman. I was just doing what was natural, chasing good-looking ladies, whoever they were and wherever they were, he said. And according to close friends, Chamberlain also loved a good threesome, as per The Atlantic. One story goes that he got up close and personal with 23 different women on one 10-day road trip, more than two a day. The math of Chamberlain's conquests are extraordinary. If he started getting down and dirty at the age of 15, he would have had 40 years to sleep with 20,000 until the publication of his book in 1991. That works out at 500 women per year and 1.4 women a day. Chamberlain addressed his sexual exploits during an appearance on Late Night with Conan O'Brien in 1997. In a 1999 interview, shortly before he died, Chamberlain said, Having a thousand different ladies is pretty cool, I've learned in my life. I've also found out that having one woman a thousand different times is more satisfying. In 2015, a man named Aaron Levi came forward claiming to be Chamberlain's son based on non-identifying papers from his adoption and information from his biological mother. As Chamberlain's sister refused to provide DNA evidence for testing, Levi's claim is not conclusive. In 2020, Cassandra Peterson, claimed that Chamberlain had sexually assaulted her during a party at his mansion in the 1970s. Chamberlain allegedly forced her to perform oral sex after offering to show her a closet containing his NBA jerseys. Personal status and other works, Chamberlain was the first big earner of basketball. He immediately became the highest paid player upon entering the NBA. He was basketball's first player to earn at least $100,000 a year and earned an unprecedented $1.5 million during his Lakers years. When he became a Laker, Chamberlain built a million-dollar mansion in Bel Air named after the Ursa Major, as a play on his nickname, the Big Dipper, he lived alone and never thought of marrying. In addition, Chamberlain drove a Ferrari, a Bentley, and had a Le Mans-style car called Searcher 1 designed and built at a cost of $750,000 in 1996. After his stint with the Conquistadors, Chamberlain successfully went into business and entertainment, made money in stocks and real estate, bought a popular Harlem nightclub, which he renamed Big Wilt Small's Paradise, and invested in broodmares. Chamberlain also provided high-level teams for girls and women in basketball, track, volleyball, and softball, and made money by appearing in ads for TWA, American Express, Volkswagen, Drexel Burnham, La Tigre Clothing, and Foot Locker. In 1976, Chamberlain turned to his interest in movies, forming a film production and distribution company to make his first film, entitled Go For It. Chamberlain played a villainous warrior and counterpart of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 1984 film Conan the Destroyer. In November 1998, he signed with Ian Ng Cheng Hin, CEO of Northern Cinema House Entertainment, to do his own biopic, wanting to tell his life story his way. The result of this resentment was the 1997 book Who's Running the Asylum? In the 1980-81 NBA season, coach Larry Brown recalled that the 45-year-old Chamberlain had received an offer from the Cleveland Cavaliers. When Chamberlain was 50, the New Jersey Nets had the same idea, but were declined. 
He would continue to epitomize physical fitness for years to come, including participating in several marathons. Chamberlain had a history of cardiovascular disease, and was briefly hospitalized in 1992 for an irregular heartbeat. On October 12, 1999, Chamberlain died at age 63 at his home in Bel Air, Los Angeles. His agent Cy Goldberg stated Chamberlain died of congestive heart failure. Following his death in 1999, Chamberlain's estate was valued at $25 million. So this is the story of NBA legend Wilt Chamberlain. It was the truth that he was one of the greatest player ever seen. We will never forget his contribution towards his life journey. We will and always love him. So we should never give up in life. If you have guts you can do anything in life. So with this we end this video. Hope you guys loved this video. Do like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel.